sometimes when it comes to Asian food, I think, gee, it's so much easier just to go out and buy it because there are so many ingredients to fix and cut, measure and chop. But uh, all that prep is done ahead of time, so by the time you're ready to work, it, it doesn't take any time at all. So the time is about the, the time commitment is very similar to what you do in many other things. It's just up front. So uh, we're going to do a beef and broccoli stir fry with a spicy Asian sauce today. And I've got a small saucepan. First, I'm going to make the sauce. So I've got about a teaspoon of vegetable oil that we're going to put in there and warm up. And to that, I'm going to add a half a teaspoon of fresh ginger. Now, when it talks about fresh ginger versus dry ginger, make sure you use the one it calls for because there's a dramatic difference. Also in here, I've got a clove of garlic, and we want to make sure we work quickly because we don't want that garlic to burn. In fact, I'm going to turn it off until uh, I get all my ingredients in here because this does heat up so very, very quickly. And then also I'm going to add a fourth of a teaspoon of crushed red pepper and a, a teaspoon of hoisin sauce. We're going to get all those things in there and stir them up just briefly because we don't want the garlic to burn. So either turn your heat down or lift the pan up. That also works to take the heat off a pan. Get those stirred together and we're ready for the next step, uh, which is to stir in a half a cup of soy sauce. And one and a half teaspoons of honey. So we're gonna bring this up to a boil eventually. So I'm going to turn the heat back up now that I've got some things moving here. Uh, I'm also going to add uh, a tablespoon of lime juice and a tablespoon of white wine vinegar. And those, again, as I said, we're going to bring those up to a boil. And then while that's working, you want to keep an eye on it so it doesn't get out of hand. Uh, but I'm going to mix together it depends on, on how thick you like your sauce. Uh, I'm going to use about a tablespoon to two tablespoons of uh, water, cold water. And then to that, I'm going to add some cornstarch. It's a teaspoon of cornstarch. Now, you could use a little bit more if you chose, if you like it a little bit thicker. We've got this boiling over here. So we've got those whisked together. These two are going to go together, and we're going to just stir it until this one comes to a boil. And then we'll set this aside. This is now our sauce. So we're going to set this aside and we're going to start on the, on the actual uh, meat and vegetable part of the dish. So this boiling, let it continue until it gets a little bit thick. With cornstarch, that may take up to a minute. Now this recipe is one uh, that is part of a new program we have at OSU called Cooking for Kids. Now this is done through the State Department of uh, education uh, and we've got a lot of partners working on this too um, but what we're seeing with school nutrition programs is that we've seen a lot of changes in the regulations and so on uh, and not necessarily all the kitchen staff are ready to take on some of those changes and the kids in the family the community the teachers also are not necessarily accepting some of those changes so we're putting together some training to help prepare the staff to go in so they understand the reasons behind some of those changes uh, and also we get them ready to actually go in the kitchen and, and make a difference. So that's what's happening and this is part of that one. It's called Cooking for Kids. If you have kids in public school this year, you may see this recipe or they may see this recipe at school lunch. And what we're doing is we've modified it so that we can bring it to you so that we can change what you're doing in your own family to match up what's happening at school. So I've got a big skillet here. We're going to put in uh, one and a half teaspoons of vegetable oil. And fairly quickly, I think this is heating up real fast. We can combine into there. Uh, whoops, I'm getting ahead of myself. I want to do the beef first. So I'm going to fish this out a little bit. And I have top sirloin. Now they won't be using top sirloin in the schools, but that's what we're going to use for home. Uh, what we want to do here is it's easier to, free to slice it nice and thin if you freeze it a little bit ahead of time. If you've got a smaller skillet, please do it in batches. And then if it sticks to the bottom, give it a moment so that it has some time to heat up so that you're not tearing the meat away. 
Also, because we're cooking on a heating element, and even though my pan seems very hot, it's not nearly as hot as a wok, which is what they would use in most aging kitchens. So that I encourage you to um, not stir it quite as much, so you can develop some of the uh, caramelization on the outside of the meat that would happen very quickly in a high temperature wok that even though I've got a hot skillet is not going to happen as fast. So we don't want to overcook this. Just cook it until the pink is gone. This is the kind of meat, if you've treated it carefully as you've gone through, uh, that you can eat at the rare or uh, medium rare stage. It's also going to cook a little bit more later on, so we want to give it some time. Okay, we still have some pink here. I'm going to go ahead and transfer it to a clean plate. Now, I'm transferring it to an extra plate. If you're going to serve it on the plate, make sure that all the meat that you put on there is, in fact, done. You don't want to put anything uh, that wasn't completely cooked onto, that, uh, onto a plate that had meat on it that wasn't completely cooked. At this point, I'm going to wipe the skillet out because we don't want to do any more dishes than we absolutely have to. And we'll go ahead and, and do the broccoli. Now, I've got another one and a half teaspoons of vegetable oil that we saved out of the pack there so that we'd have some to do some of the uh, smaller things. And I'm going to add back now the broccoli to this. And also, that's two cups of broccoli florets. All, and I would use just florets. I tend to like to use the stalks as well, but even if you peel them, they're going to cook at a different rate. So just florets for this one. Also got a half a cup of shredded carrots and about a cup or one uh, red bell pepper that I've sliced. And I usually say use whatever color you have. In this case, I, I do like to use the, the red one because it adds so much more color to the final dish. And this we're going to cook probably about three minutes until it's just crisp, crisp, tender. We want all the color remaining and most of the nutrition, but we're all going to soften it up just a tad. Also, we're coating it all with oil, uh, which will also improve the flavor. When it's you notice that the color on the broccoli has gotten a lot sharper and brighter, we're going to add the meat back. And we're just about done here. We're then going to grab the sauce, and that's going to go in, and we're just going to heat it through. And this becomes a absolutely terrific meal that your kids will have had already in school if they are taking part in school lunch programs and that the rest of your family is going to like as well. A lot of the work I mentioned uh, is done ahead. You can do it more than that moment ahead. You can also do it a couple of days ahead. You can buy carrots that are already uh, sliced into matchsticks. You can buy broccoli crowns and so on. So uh, a lot of the work can be missed. Uh, I always think it's kind of more fun if you do it yourself. This makes four servings. Notice that I'm putting it over brown rice. Uh, that's another thing that the kids are going to see is a lot more whole grains and so that makes it uh, more nutritious getting more of those whole grains and uh, again if we can match the things that we're seeing happening in the school program then I think the kids are going to get more used to them uh, because we're seeing them at home they're going to ask the parents to get them uh, at home as well and, and the whole uh, system is going to change of what people think are good choices it's starting now in Oklahoma I hope you'll try this one. It's got a long name. It's uh, Beef and Broccoli Stir Fry with a Spicy Asian Sauce. For Oklahoma Gardening, I'm Barbara Brown. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.